Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Beast Mysteries. Initially, I had a different video planned to release today, but uh, there's been some really terrible news, and I'm sure if you're part of the Bigfoot community or have been following any of the Bigfoot pages on the internet, on Facebook and whatnot, uh, you probably already know that uh, last night, Dr. John Bindernagel passed away. Um, it's... I don't know, it's just a heavy feeling to, uh, to hear that. I had the pleasure in 2014 of meeting him and uh, like that whole experience was just like a dream come true to me. It was almost like meeting a Hollywood celebrity. Um, I had always been like a fan of his since I was a little kid. I would always see him on TV, all the documentaries I would see on like Discovery Channel and History Channel, he'd be on them. So he was the guy, the Bigfoot guy. And uh, it was just so awesome. I, I'm so lucky and grateful to have to have met him. And he was just a great man. He was so generous and nice. Like I remember when I started shooting Wild Man, my search for Sasquatch. I'm like, how do I get somebody like John Bindernagel in my film? And uh, I went on his website. I threw him an email, and he got back to me. And he's like, seemed super excited about it. And uh, he gave me his address, his phone number. He's like, yeah, like, I'd love to talk about it. Uh, talk about the subject of Sasquatch. Here's my address. You can come to my house and we can talk. I'm like, oh, wow. Like, it's not a lot of people who will throw that line out to strangers that they haven't even met before. Like, oh, yeah, come to my home and uh, we can talk about Bigfoot. But I thought that was just crazy, so I followed through with it, and I went to his house in Courtney um, on Vancouver Island, just a small, quiet little neighborhood that he lived in. And uh, yeah, he was full of energy, just super enthusiastic about anything Sasquatch. And he, I don't know, he's just committed so much of his life to something that he believed in. And it takes a big man to do that, you know, to take the ridicule and the judgment, especially from like the, um, especially from the scientific community, you know, that he worked with. It just takes a hell of a man to to put all that out there and uh, to stick with it. And it's just unfortunate, you know, during his time on the planet, he wasn't able to see the Sasquatch proven to be real 100%. But, you know, I feel like now he probably has his answers, I'm hoping. And, uh, yeah, like, I don't know, when I went and visited him, he was just, like, so excited. He comes out to my vehicle with me, he's helping me carry in all my camera gear. I'm like, whoa, like, you should slow down, like, you don't have to help me, like, I can, I can do this. He's, he was just, he wouldn't have any of it, like, he was just so nice and welcoming, and I'll never forget that experience. It was just, I don't know. It was one of the greatest experiences of my life to be able to sit down and talk to him about Sasquatch for a couple hours. And uh, he was one of the legends in the Bigfoot community. He was totally dedicated. He was an actual scientist, a biologist. He knew what he was talking about. The guy was a genius, as far as I'm concerned, you know, about wildlife and about the Sasquatch topic. So I'm glad his fight with, you know, cancer is over and he doesn't have to feel that pain anymore. But it's still saddening, unfortunate. Um, I, can't, I can't say enough good things about him. Like he was 100% authentically kind. You don't meet a lot of people nowadays that have that quality to them, you know? And I'm sure if I was in his position in my life, you know, committing all my time and effort into Sasquatch research and taking all the ridicule, I would probably be a very crusty and salty person, but not John. He was just his whole life just very enthusiastic, positive, and committed to his work. And uh, I can't say thank you enough to, to him and to everything that he brought to the table. Um, he's inspired a lot of people, a lot of Bigfoot researchers, a lot of Bigfoot enthusiasts. They all look up to John Bindernagel, uh, him and Jeff Meldrum, and uh, you know, He'll be with us in our thoughts for a long, long time. So, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's kind of hard to talk about, but it's one of those things that, you know, everybody has their time. And, and he, you know, went big in his life and he accomplished a lot. So 
may he rest in peace and uh, thanks for watching. It's a bit of a cliche, a guy holding a, a plaster cast. I try to, <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's, it's important. Yeah, um, this, is, this is the original. It's, it's been broken, as you can see, I've had to reinforce it, but th this is the original of the one that my wife and I found. Uh, unfortunately, a hiker stepped in this track before we got the cast in, so there was a bit of a boot print, which is unfortunate, for but other than that, it's a really excellent cast. You know, shows the very stout, robust heel, Toes very clear, kind of curled upwards, um, about 15 inches, pretty, pretty, pretty close to average. I think 16 inches is the, the average length in John Green's files. So, uh, yeah, so, I mean, this is the, the, the track cast that I had on my desk uh, since 87. It, it still took a few years before I said, come on, John, you really, somebody, somebody should really be working on this. You know, <laughs> you know biologists are, are usually quite, get quite excited about discovering new mammals and working, be the first to really work out stuff about new mammals. And I'd go off working on assignments with the United Nations to various parts of the world. I always thought, oh, I'm going to come back and some young biologist is going to take it on the Sasquatch and build a re his reputation and it'll be, you know, done. Well, no, the, no young biologist is taking it on. And, and, and no, bio, no one's taking it on. I mean, invest, and, uh, amateur investigators are, but no scientists are thinking, my goodness, you know, it really is scientifically taboo. Very strange. <clears throat> are the ones behind you, those must be juvenile. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> These are from uh, Jeff Meldum's collection. And uh, this is pretty interesting, because I mean, the, the, it's, a, it's a juvenile track, about just over between seven and eight inches in length, very, very wide, spreading toes. We have a, uh, a track like this now in snow from uh, the coast range here, gee, not two, two hours from Vancouver possibly. Um, very, very nice, very similar to that, but much shorter, only um, two and a half inches. So, uh, so it's interesting because, you know, people say, oh, well, if, if you had a small Sasquatch it, track, it would look like a human, but no, these are, these are actually quite, quite different. You know, I mean, especially the spreading toes. And, 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 the, and the width in that one. <clears throat>